it certainly broadened NATO's horizons to become not a global policeman, but at least an organization which is prepared to, to act globally. We, we have to go where the, the threats are. And, and, and although, yes, we will hopefully be able to uh, wind up the ISAF operation in Afghanistan in 2014, the, the fact that we need to engage with countries like Afghanistan or Pakistan, uh, where terrorist organizations are implanted, where they could easily re-implant themselves uh, after NATO leaves, in other words, that it's a, it's a long-term commitment, not, not simply through the life of military operation. That has, I think, changed NATO's strategic horizon in a permanent way. Another aspect is the need to have global partners to address these issues. I mean, without Afghanistan, would you have Australia today so close to NATO, or Japan, or New Zealand? Would we have established relations with Tonga, or with Mongolia, or with Malaysia? Uh, the answer is no. But we need to maintain that global network of partners to deal with other uh, uh, missions. So that's the first way that NATO has changed since 9-11. The second way is, is what we call the emerging security challenges. So there was a time when you know, NATO's uh, remit was essentially to launch military operations uh, to deal with failed states or to deal with humanitarian urgencies like in Bosnia, like in Kosovo. But we didn't really do much when it came to homeland security uh, against uh, terrorist threats uh, on our territory. I think we've realized since 9-11 that uh, you have to go to where the threat is, but you also have to be prepared to protect your citizens closer to home. Uh, and therefore, NATO has taken up issues like counterterrorism or, or cyber, we've been talking about that, uh, or issues like energy security, the implication of energy blackmail, energy cutoffs. We've, we've taken up these new security challenges because only that way can NATO be fully relevant uh, to its citizens. So in other words, we've stepped up our ability to engage abroad, but at the same time also our ability to engage at, at, at home. So 9-11 has made NATO realise that we can't be a, an organisation that deals just with one type of contingency, a failing state. We have to be able to handle a much broader range of security uh, challenges, but we can't do it by ourselves. You know, we are part of the action and we have to be able to link up with the EU, the UN, the other organisations that are handling uh, those challenges. And at the same time, outside uh, the NATO territory, we can't do it alone, so we need to be able to work with uh, partners. So 9-11 has also sort of you know, changed NATO, but it's integrated NATO much more closely into the international community. Before 9-11, we were much more of a kind of stand-alone, stand-apart a world into ourselves type of organization. Since 9-11, I would in fact argue we've been less of an organization and more of a network. You know, we've been much more plugged in uh, to working with, with others. Uh, you know, what, the best things we do today are the things that we do with others, not by ourselves.